brown luggage labels in the buttonholes of duffel coats, gas masks and boxes and suitcases in hand. Crowds of coy bright-eyed children gather on train platforms preparing for their long journeys to the safety of the countryside. The dangers of war are looming. The cities will soon be an unsafe place for the young. This is On the Homefront, a sub-series of World War II in real time. I'm Anna Deinhardt. During the Second World War, when the Allies and Axis carry out endless deadly attacks from the air and the Nazi terror spreads into the home of the targets, the cities are no longer a safe place for vulnerable civilians or children to be. The Second World War is a total war and the enemy's bombs will not spare even the most innocent of lives. So Europe's youth, masses of children are evacuated from danger. The pictures of British children heading off to the countryside might come to mind first, but they are not the first ones to be evacuated. Before the war begins, masses of German children are taken out of the grasp of Hitler in what will become known as Kindertransport. It's 1938 and as you may have seen in the Between Two Wars episode The Road to the Holocaust, Jews in Central and Eastern Europe are facing increasingly brutal anti-Semitic violence. As the public knowledge of this tragedy grows, the British government resolves to help Jewish children to find safety in the UK. In December, the first train leaves Berlin. Although children hold on hope that their families will join them in Britain, many will never see their parents again. In the next nine months, 10,000 Jewish children between the ages of 5 and 17 are evacuated from Germany, Austria, Poland and Czechoslovakia to safety in the UK. It's so few because neither the British nor the Nazis are paying for travel, care or education. So that even if many parents want to send their children to safety, only a small amount of families can actually afford it. As a result, by the end of the war, 1.5 million children will be murdered at the hands of the Nazis. As the final kinder transport trains depart from Berlin, Vienna and Prague in August 1939, the UK is making arrangements to keep its own youth population safe from Hitler, as war looks inevitable. In Britain, the feared threat of aerial bombings is a growing worry for Neville Chamberlain's government. Now, the Great War gave the country a small taste of air raids, but with the advances in aerial warfare, it's anticipated that this time around the bombings of Europe's cities are going to be far more deadly. A subdivision of the Air Raids Precaution Committee, led by Minister of Civil Defense Sir John Anderson, has been set up since May. Together with rail officials, teachers and rural billeting officers, they are about to launch Operation Pied Piper. On August 31, 1939, a few days before Britain enters the war, the Ministry of Health issues that the order to evacuate forthwith to begin mass evacuations of city children. On September 1st, at the crack of dawn, children who should be waking up for the new school year, instead assemble in their schoolyards in preparation to travel to the countryside. In just three days, 1.5 million evacuees make the journey to safety. They are 673,000 school children, 406,000 mothers and their preschool children and 3,000 expectant mothers. It's close to half of the children living in Britain's cities like London, Manchester, Liverpool, Sunderland, Birmingham, Leeds, Portsmouth and Southampton. Although some of the teachers are also being relocated with the school children, members of the Women's Voluntary Service help organize the swarms of children and carry their luggage onto the trains. Some kids are in high spirits and sing the melodies of the Lambeth Walk while others cry as their parents instruct them to write home as soon as you can and look after your sister. The government pays for the train fare, but each child is asked to pack. A handbag or case containing the child's gas mask, a change of underclothing, night clothes, house shoes or plimsolls, 
spare stockings or socks, a toothbrush, a comb, towel, soap and face cloth, handkerchiefs and, if possible, a warm coat or Macintosh. Each child should bring a packet of food for the day. That's a pretty big ask for poor families. It's most likely that children have to share these items with the siblings or don't own some of them at all. That's true for most of them, as it is mainly middle and lower class children that are being evacuated here. See, over the summer, many wealthy parents have already sent their children off to stay with family members in the countryside. And that is where the children in Operation Pied Piper are heading to. In preparation for the scheme, areas of the country have been divided up by their expected risk of bombing and label either evacuation, neutral or reception, which are areas all over the British Isles, like in Kent, Wales and East Anglia. It's a huge national security project and due to last-minute rescheduling, some errors occur. Like the mothers and babies bound for Hertfordshire arrive in Oxfordshire, leaving host families at the station expecting school children slightly confused. And on several train platforms, such as Bedford, children haven't been assigned to a specific family, so new mothers rub elbows trying to pick out the best looking of the bunch. What's going to be an even bigger challenge is the cultural differences between town and country folk. Already before evacuations even take place, there are concerns. One man voices his fear that disputes and difficulties will be likely to arise after the first few weeks when incompatibilities of temperament and differences in customs and outlook would be likely to make themselves felt. When plans for Operation Pied Piper become known, some rural homeowners originally refused to accommodate city evacuees. They fear the vastly different pace of life that these city rulers bring with them, and several evacuees are received with indifference, mistreatment and, in some case, abuse. Some local authorities are handed children with issues like malnutrition, lice or scabies, acquired in the overcrowded and poor urban settings. One will report towards the end of the war that years of efforts had not sufficed to rid the children of vermin. The Children's Overseas Reception Board is also set to send children to the US, Canada and Australia. But after only 3000 children are relocated, the program is ended, when a passenger ship carrying evacuees is sunk by Germans in September 1940 and killing 73 children. But over the course of the war, some 14,000 children will be privately sent to the English-speaking corners of the Commonwealth by parents who can afford to. In October of the same year, 14-year-old Princess Elizabeth gives her first broadcast as a public figure. She tries to settle any of the young listeners' worries by reassuring them that one day all will be well. My sister, Margaret Rose and I, feel so much for you. As we know from experience what it means to be away from those we love most of all. To you living in new surroundings, we send a message of true sympathy. And at the same time, we would like to thank the kind people who have welcomed you to their homes in the country. And when peace comes, remember, it will be for us, the children of today, to make the world of tomorrow a better and happier place. We know, every one of us, that in the end, all will be well. And as the terror of the war against civilians in Polish and Finnish cities during the autumn and early winter become known, the evacuation seems like a good idea. But as the war rumbles on into 1940, the Germans' attempts to bomb England have been rare. So against the government's advice, most of the children, 900,000, return to their city homes. But in June, the fall of France makes it clear that the Nazis' next target is England, so waves of mass evacuation start again. Now children are being evacuated or, in some cases, re-evacuated not only from the cities but also the south and east coast in the fear of a coastal invasion, 
Within the UK, evacuation remains voluntary, but the government's propaganda posters are really pushing parents to send their children away. You can imagine, it's hard enough to say goodbye to your child without knowing when or if you're ever going to see them again, but there's also some doubt in the back of parents' minds. Even in the villages, children aren't entirely protected. There's a real chance that German pilots will misjudge the air raids. But as the bombs start dropping daily on the cities, it becomes increasingly clear that children are more safe in the countryside, so most families comply. Roughly 60% of children are evacuated and so until December 1941, 1 1.5 million more evacuees will leave the cities. And the children who are lucky to get on well with their new parents thrive in the British countryside life. One young boy evacuated from Coventry in 1940 will recall the highlights of country life. I loved them Wellingtons. I'd never had any before. Wherever my foster mother went, I was with her. She used to call me a shadow. They did give me a job to do. I used to go and fetch the eggs. There were hundreds of eggs, lots of chickens. I was very happy. I didn't want to go home. And in fact, some of them won't return home after the war. Mostly because their parents are no longer alive. But in some cases, especially among the very young, because they have become more familiar with the wartime family than the one they were born into. And what about the other belligerents? Well, Germany's efforts for one don't compare to the British. It takes until September 1940, until Kinderlandsverschickung or relocation of children to the countryside starts when Berlin has just been bombed by the RAF for the first time and the Nazis know it won't be the last. Evacuation starts in Berlin and Hamburg and later from cities like Essen, Cologne and Düsseldorf, the People's Welfare of the Nazi Party organized children to be relocated to Bavaria, Saxony and Prussia. Evacuations are slow at first. By 1941, only 500,000 mothers and young children have been moved. But by the end of the war, some 3 million Germans will be evacuated to the countryside. Like in the UK, some are placed in host families, but others spent the war in Hitler youth camps where they will be trained to become ideal future citizens of the Nazi state. And like in Britain, all over Europe, families find themselves in new homes as conflict breaks out on their doorsteps. Over the course of the war, 70,000 Finnish children are evacuated to Sweden, 2 million Belgians flee into France, and 7 million French people will be displaced. But for those who stay home during the war, their city lives are filled with the looming dread of the enemy's next raid. Despite the mass national efforts in Britain, 7,736 children will be killed. In Germany, it is estimated that up to 75,000 children will lose their lives in the enemy bombing attacks. If you'd like to find out more about that refugee crisis, you can click right here for a War Against Humanity episode about displacement at the outbreak of war. Join our effort to never forget the past by signing up for the Time Ghost Army at patreon.com or timeghost.db. Subscribe, ring that bell and stay safe.